an aircraft carrier, frigates, destroyers, submarines, and over 30 aircraft formed the carrier strike group. Its deployment, a benchmark for UK, EU and NATO engagement in the Indo-Pacific region, one that cannot be seen to fail. Behind what the MOD described as a globe-spanning maiden deployment are a multitude of efforts from the MOD, the Royal Navy and industry. British defence and aerospace company BA Systems played a crucial role in the path to achieving operational deployment, from prototype to maintenance, building network infrastructure to delivery. So BAE Systems played um, quite a big role in, in the creation of the Carrier Strike Group. Uh, we've built many of the Royal Navy ships uh, that make up the Carrier Strike Group, but we also provided uh, provide a lot of the equipment and systems that are fitted to the ships. So, so not just you know, building and integrating complex platforms like the aircraft carriers and the Type 45, um, including all their complex power and propulsion systems and everything else, but also their mission systems equipment. So the radars, uh, the torpedoes that the aircraft carry and the combat management systems and, and integrating the whole combat systems. A role that did not come free from challenges. And there's, as you've said, there's a huge range of challenges. I think one of the biggest one is, is sort of dovetailing uh, the incredible pace of change of technology and try and fit that into quite a long shipbuild program. Uh, it takes quite a long time to, to, to build a big complex platform like an aircraft carrier, uh, but making sure that the systems that we provide by the time the ship comes out are still continue updated, relevant um, to fight um, and do the missions that the ships need. Well, clearly the, the strike group is made up of, of multiple ships and vessels, as you said. Um, its strength is in each constituent part having its own unique role and then bringing that together as part of the command and control for the whole group. Um, and the, the role BA Systems has played in that is, is ensuring that each individual vessel uh, with its clear requirements is, is well understood by the customer and enables us then to make the appropriate plans to ensure that that vessel's either got the capability and, and is maintained well enough to sustain that capability throughout the deployment as an integrated task group and indeed at times when they disaggregate. And speaking of maintenance, the Carrier Strike Group embarked in a 28-week deployment and will cover over 25,000 nautical miles, conducting exercises with the light navies. So I asked BAE what maintenance was done in preparation for the voyage. Uh, you could split it down what we've done into three key elements. Uh, firstly, the normal planned routine maintenance that you do to, to a ship. And of course, what we've had to do is we've had to look forward um, to the ship deploying for how long to make sure that the maintenance is in date to sustain the ship on deployment. So, for example, the aircraft carrier's got lots of lifts and they um, require statutory six month maintenance. So where possible, we've lined that up before the ship's gone as late as possible in the program. And the fact that the carriers are deployed for more than six months, we've arranged for some of that maintenance to be done uh, in country downstream. The second element is, is understanding the material state of the ship. So what uh, existing defects are there, what potential are there for defects? And we've brought all of that work forward over several support periods and increased the material state of the ship for the deployment. And the third and probably the most significant amount of work we've had to do is to provide the ship with the right capability. Work was also done to ensure maintenance throughout the strike group's entire journey, which include visits to over 40 countries with four major stops on the Indo-Pacific leg, Singapore, Korea, Japan and India. We've worked again closely with the Royal Navy to understand the route. We've then done uh, extensive uh, analysis of the supply chain along that route and the optimum times when there's uh, an opportunity 
to maintain the ship in a uh, foreign port. And, and we've had to plan for uh, isolation, quarantine in those countries where we can or cannot use organic labor. And the other piece of work we work very hard for the customer to is as risk mitigation for, bearing in mind, particularly for Queen Elizabeth, she's not being extensively used or been very far yet. We've had two trips to the US. So drawn on that experience, we, we've pre-bought some spares and both put them either in the task group, either in the ships themselves or in the RFAs, or we've pre-positioned them overseas where we can get easy access to them. Beyond the actual equipment and its maintenance, the strike group is fitted with latest generation technologies in the form of the shared infrastructure cloud-based technology. So on the aircraft carrier, they've got uh, the sort of next evolution of our uh, shared infrastructure products, which we've developed for, for the Royal Navy, with the Royal Navy. And that's, a you know, for people who know about it, it's a private cloud system that's on the ship. So it provides all the computing infrastructure and digital backbone uh, that the ships need. So we flood the ship with all the fiber optics and the networks that they need uh, to interconnect any of the systems that they need on the platform and provide a, a sort of shared computing hosting environment where uh, the customer, the Navy, can then bring in any new applications. So with the, the version that they've now got on, on the aircraft carrier, is they've got a sandbox which effectively allows the Navy to bring in any new applications, capability uh, that they may want in a safe, secure, reliable manner. At the core of the shared infrastructure which ensures interoperability in between the different components of the task force, both national and international, command and control communication and data flow is the combat management system application. So the combat management system is an application that sits on the shared infrastructure. Um, and that's really the one that does all the collation of all the sensor information that's coming either from the platform sensors itself or from other uh, platforms, things that come in over NATO data link standards, for example, or other sources of information they may have. Um, and the combat management system is what puts all that data information together and present it in a way that the decision maker, the operator on board can then have a complete picture, a tactical picture of what's going on around them and make the decisions that they need to enable the mission. BAE also told Shepard that in addition to the shared infrastructure and the combat management system, the ships are fitted with an air group management application, which is a software that helps the air operation team on the carrier, drawing on a multitude of sensors from the ship to the management of the onboard aircraft. The Carrier Strike Group features a wide array of next-generation capabilities, from its weaponry to its cloud-based technology, but one could not expect less than that from what has been defined as the military operation of 2021. It is what I would call a national endeavour. Um, as, and it's something, as a nation, we're all quite rightly proud to have played a part in. But I think what we must realise is this now is just normal routine business. This will happen every year. Um, one of these carriers will be deployed in this configuration with a number of other warships every year. And the key challenge for me and my team is two things this year. One, to sustain those ships on that de initial deployment, learn from it. And the most important thing is to then regenerate them when they come home in December to ready to redeploy next year. Although much optimism surrounds the Carrier Strike Group deployment, experts warn there are still many unknowns, such as how the UK responds to the probes of the PLA Navy in the Indian Ocean and strategic sea lines of communication that serve the region.